Ah, freak out! It's that time of year again where I feel the stress of not getting as much reading done as I should be getting done. Love that for me! What up, reader fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing that thing that I gotta do every year in the middle of the year. And that is freak out about the fact that it's the middle of the year. And freak out about the small amount of books I've read so far this year. As if I don't already do that all day, every day. Today I'm doing the mid-year book freak out tag. This tag was created back in the day, like forever ago, I feel like, by Ellie from Earl Grey Books and Shammy from, I believe her channel name is just Shammy now. It's become a staple now for every booktuber ever to do in the middle of the year. And here I am being a basic boy bringing you mine. I'm gonna be going over some solid new favorite books, some not so solid favorite reads, and just some general updates on my reading so far this year. Can't wait to have a mental crisis throughout this video. Insert clown music here. <laughs> First up though, today's video has a sponsor. Book of the Month has so kindly sponsored this video. If you don't know anything about Book of the Month, then let me fill you in. Book of the Month is a monthly bookish subscription service. That was a mouthful, not gonna lie. Had a hard time saying Book of the Month is a monthly bookish subscription service. Had to slow that sentence down. Book of the Month supports new and upcoming authors. Every month, their team curates new reads that are either new or early releases. Each month, they come at you with an array of new genres to keep those book selections spicy. The spicier, the better, in my opinion. I have many regrets. <laughs> It is a monthly subscription box, but they do offer the chance to skip a month and you won't be charged in case there's a title that doesn't interest you that month. You can get your first book for only $9.99 using the code JESSE. I feel so special. I have a code. That's my name. J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Don't put an I in there. A lot of you guys put an I in my name. There's no I. I ain't no Jesse with an I. I will say that $9.99 is a steal when it comes to adult hardbacks because those books can be anywhere from $30 or more. Uh, let's look over their July selections. First up, we've got the people we keep. This cover though, I am deceased. This is a young adult historical fiction book taking place in the 1990s. It's about a girl who is struggling to find herself and after a huge blowout with her father, she decides to go on a journey to find herself. Next, we have Razorblade Tears. This is a mystery thriller about two fathers looking for answers after their sons are murdered. Next, Sisters in Arms, a historical fiction story inspired by the 6888, the only all-black battalion of the Women's Army Corps. Next, 56 Days, a thriller about a couple that moves and together during the pandemic, and one of them ends up dead. <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> and then finally, the book in the box, the special fancy schmancy box, book of the month box. <laughs> the book in the box is We Are the Brennans, a contemporary story about a family that is torn apart by secrets. Those are the July selections. I will leave a link in the description as to where you can find out more information on them. I'd say the one that piqued my interest the most would have to be 56 Days. Something about a murder in the middle of a pandemic just sounds extra spicy to me. <laughs> I'm also drawn to this one, but mostly for superficial reasons. It's beautiful. Again, thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video, and you can use the code JESSE to get your first book for $9.99. I'll leave a link down below in the description as to where you can check that out. Now, without further ado, it's time to spiral. It's time to freak out. It's time for the mid-year book freak out tag. Let's talk books. What's the best book you've read so far in 2020? I'm gonna have to go with These Violent Delights, a book where all my boxes were checked. A check, a check, a check. This is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet set in Shanghai in the 1920s. We've got two rival gangs. We've got the Scarlet Guard and the White Flowers. But now now there's something weird happening, causing people to rip out their throats. Casual! The rival gangs must set their differences aside and work together to figure out what the heck is going on. Why are people ripping out their throats? Literally. This was such a strong debut on so many levels. I'm on the next level, if you get that reference. Then you're K-pop trash just like me. The first level for me was the writing. Sometimes fantasies can be a bit wordy for me. Not to say detail isn't nice, but when it's hard to decipher what's happening in these like over-detailed scenes, you've lost me. I'm lost in a forest of words and you gotta send out a search party to find me. This one was just the right amount of detail and just the right amount of poetic writing. A beautiful pairing, a beautiful marriage. Do you say I do? I do, I do, I do. The second level were all the characters. We have so many fantastic but also so many terrible characters. Characters. We've got ones that you'll root for and then ones that you'll hope will eventually end up ripping out their throats. Did I just say that? I did. You caught me. The last level was just the plot itself. It held my attention through and through. I can't lie, it's not like the strongest plot, but it did what it needed to do to keep my attention, to hold my attention. I was satisfied with it. This one also made me realize that I've never read Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I did go over it in class, but did I ever read it? I don't think so. I think I convinced myself that I had read it, but I don't think I actually ever really read it. I've been lying to myself 
myself, y'all. Oop de oop. Next question. Best sequel you've read so far in 2020. The Desolations of Devil's Acre. Remember when I said I was gonna stop talking about this series for a little while? Well, look at me now, being weak and talking about the series again. Truth be told, I haven't read a lot of sequels this year, so like I just kind of had to pick this one. So that left me grasping for whatever book I could get my hands on. And that's this. The Desolations of Devil's Acre. Honestly, I know that a lot of people are like, why did he extend the series? He ruined it. Ah! And I understand the disappointment. I see it. I get it. I got it. I just appreciate the last three books for what they are. And that is more adventures with my favorite peculiar crew. I'll never say no to that. This final book in a lot of ways reminded me of Library of Souls, which was an excellent finale. In fact, every time I reread Library of Souls, I appreciate it more and more for its perfection. He truly did what needed to be done with Library of Souls. And when I say I loved it, I mean I'm still recovering from it. I don't think the Desolations of Devil's Acre necessarily reached the same magnitude of love that I have for Library of Souls, but I still loved it. And it was still the best sequel I read this year, which actually technically I reread Library of Souls this year, so I could count Library of Souls, but like, whatever, it's done. Desolations of Devil's Acre. Yeah, I'm a mess. Messy, throw me away. Please, about to throw myself away. Number three, new release you haven't read but want to. I've got two. First up, we've got All Our Hidden Gifts. This is a story of a girl who does tarot readings at her school, and when a classmate draws an unfamiliar card one day, they end up going missing. And our main character must try and track them down and figure out what the heck happened. Does that just not sound like a chaotic mess? A mess that I would love to consume. I feel like in this scenario, though, I'd be the friend that went missing. I'm always that friend. And the next one I'm looking forward to getting to is The Lucky List. This is a story about a girl whose mother dies due to cancer. When she finds her mom's senior year bucket list, she decides that she is going to complete that bucket list in order to feel closer to her mother. This is the book solution book of the month for the month of July, and our live show is going to be on the 24th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to pick it up, read it, and join us. I'm excited for it because I know it's going to be an emotional roller coaster, and I love to be wrecked emotionally. It's always a good time having those moments where you have to lie on the floor because you're just so emotional over a freaking book, and you have to stare at the ceiling and just space out for a little while. Looking forward to it. Question number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. It's gotta be you reached Sam, and no, not only because the cover is beautiful. This story is about a girl whose boyfriend Sam has passed away, and when she calls his cell phone just to hear his voice again on his voicemail, he ends up picking up. My love for sad books is showing right now. To be honest, so I wear that love on my sleeve. Y'all know I love a book that comes through and gives a big old poke to my heart. Poke, poke, poke. I'm very eager to see how this one ends up turning out. Like, what happens when he picks up the phone? Does that mean he ain't really dead? Is he a ghosty boy now? Is he always gonna answer the phone when she calls, or is it a one and done deal? I need answers. Number five, your biggest book disappointment this year. That's gonna have to go to The Beauty That Remains. This is a book that follows three different characters who are all dealing with loss and are all brought together through music. Now this one had a lot of elements going for it at the start, and at first I was vibing, I thought I loved it, and then I quickly realized that I couldn't stand it. I'm sorry, book. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was one thing in particular, one scene in particular, that just made me so uncomfortable. Welcome to Uncomfyville. I also just felt like there was just too much going on that I had a hard time getting invested in the actual story. I needed it to like hone in a little bit, but I understand that that's hard when you've got three perspectives to balance. I do see potential in this author's writing though, but this book in particular just wasn't for me. Number six, what was the biggest surprising book you read this year? For me, that is Winter's Orbit. This is a sci-fi novel that follows an arranged marriage after the passing of an imperial prince to keep the peace of a political mess. While the prince's death was first ruled out as an accident, things have shifted and his death is now falling under the murder mystery category. I don't really do sci-fi. I keep wanting to do sci-fi, but then every time I get into a sci-fi book, it just like goes way over my head. So I end up just sticking with my comfort zone, that being contemporary fiction. This one was great though in that it read like fan fiction, which is not an insult. Fan fiction is super fun to read, and it has an addictive quality to it, which is exactly what this book had. An addictive quality to the writing. I feel like some people could be thrown off by this book because of how heavy it is in terms of politics, because it can be a bit too much at times, but the characters truly bring their A-game to this book and carry the book on their shoulders. They're what make it such a fun reading experience. Question number seven, what's a new favorite author? I'd say Miss Chloe Gong. Honestly, the author of These Violent Delights? Chloe really stepped up to the plate and knocked it out the park with These Violent Delights. She impressed me enough to be a new favorite author. Mind you, it's hard to maintain that slot, so I hope she knocks it out the park with her next book, These Violent Ends. You can do it, Chloe. I'm rooting for you, Chloe. Question number eight, what's a new favorite character? I'd say Min from Dragon Pearl. This is a middle grade sci-fi book that follows a family full of fox spirits. We follow the perspective of Min who goes on a quest to find her brother who has gone missing. Min's desperation to do everything she can to figure out where her brother is is what made me weak for her. I loved following her journey and seeing how she handled every obstacle that was thrown her way. Question number nine, what's a book that made you cry? It's rare 
rare that I ever cry while reading a book, but let me tell you, one book that definitely had me on the verge of tears was 1,000 Paper Cranes. It was so close to pushing my tears button and having me cause water damage to occur on this here book. In this, we go over the events of the bombing of Hiroshima, and we follow this young girl named Sadako, a girl who was affected by the aftermath of the bombing. I think part of the fact as to why it was such an emotional read is because of the fact that it actually happened. Like, this is nonfiction. It's a real event that occurred. The terrible events that happened in this book actually happened. And the torture that our main character Sadako is going through after the fact is a real thing that happened. So knowing all of those things just made it so much more emotional. And it just really hurt my heart while reading it. But at the same time, it's such a beautiful and important read. And I definitely recommend checking it out. Question number 11, what's a book that made you happy? Happily Ever Afters. In this book, we follow Tessa, who loves writing and gets into this creative writing program at a prestigious art school. But when she gets there, she's hit with a writing slump. Since she primarily writes romance, her and her best friend come up with this idea that if she had her own little romance, it'll inspire her to write again. So our main character, Tessa, sets out on her journey to find some romance. Now listen, the more time I spend away from this book, the more I realize that I didn't really like it, which might be confusing as to why I'm picking it for this happy book category. But while I didn't love this book, it still made me happy. It was still a fun book. Like it is fueled with sunshine, happiness, unicorns, all that good stuff, all that stuff that's supposed to make you happy. It's in here. Somehow in the writing style, it's fueled with happiness. It's still very much so a fun, lighthearted read, even though there are things that really made me mad while reading it. I will just say that the romance that she was pushing for, I was not into it. I know I'm making no sense right now, but do I ever make sense? No. Welcome to my life. The nonsense life. Question number 12, what's the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? It's for sure, hands down, gotta be in The Ravenous Dark. This came in one of my Illumicrate boxes, and while I love the cover, what really does it for me with this book is these stenciled edges. I literally lost my chill when I saw them, like all chill has been lost. Tell me this is not everything. Scratch that. Don't tell me that. It is everything. And the cover itself is just a stunner. This book is just beautiful, okay? Question number 13, and the final question, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? every book ever, and if I were to list them off, I'd stress myself out. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna pick out one book that I really wanna get to this year. I feel like the selection might be really random, but it's a book that I really wanted to get to last year, and guess what? Didn't get around to it. That is The Silence of Bones. It's a historical fiction book that takes place in Korea in the 1800s. We follow Seoul, who has teamed up with an inspector to investigate this murder that has occurred. But when the inspector becomes a prime suspect in the case, our main character's loyalty is tested. I've heard so many great things about this book, and it's time that I give it my attention, give it some love, allow my eyeballs to take in the words, and dive on into it. It's gotta happen. All right, guys, that's it for the mid-year book freakout tag. I hope that you enjoyed this video. You guys should let me know down below in the comments some books that you are hoping to get to before the end of the year. I wanna know what books are on your list. Thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Again, use the code JESSE to get your first box for $9.99. Holla, holla. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you wanna see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye yo! <coughs> Actually though, <coughs> I like spice but not as much as I was poured in my mouth. <coughs> thank you, whoa! And I understand the and I un, and I.